Okay, first of all, congratulations for the movie. It's amazing. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, let's go. This has to be so fast. So, well, my first question is, I would like to ask you about this thing that some people say that uh, Marvel fans are getting like a little bit tired of um, because they are having uh, so many movies and TV shows every year and there is no this, there's no more this feeling about it being special, being an event. So I would like you to tell me your opinion. Well, I think, you know, to me, I, I only work on a movie at a time, right? This being the third Ant-Man movie. So really the only thing that's within my control is my movie. And I take that responsibility very seriously. And, and by responsibility, I mean I want to provide uh, an experience for the audience that is hopefully something they have not seen before, something, you know, even with these characters that they're familiar with. Um, in this movie, we wanted to do something different, which was not spend the whole movie in San Francisco, but really take our characters down into the quantum realm uh, further than we've ever been before and answer those questions we set up in the last movies about what Janet was doing down there and also introduce Kang the Conqueror. Um, you know, we live in an environment now where there are so much movies and, and, and TVs, but t TV shows to, to keep up with. <laughs> but my concern is sort of like doing something that is a very cinematic experience. Quantumania was made to be seen you know, we shot a lot of it in IMAX format uh, to be seen as big as possible in a communal experience in a theater. So to me, it's like that's sort of the version. That's that's the th that's the thing I have control over, right? To make a very uh, special experience for the audience. No, that, that's perfect. Because I was asking that because I read that uh, Kevin Feige said that he would like uh, the MCU to last like 80 years or so. So do you think that's possible? 80 years? Eight zero? Yeah. Uh, well, listen, I, I won't probably be around to, to watch all those uh, movies, but um, sure. If it means that movies keep going for that long, absolutely, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> okay, so, uh, well, there are also people who said that uh, superhero movies in general uh, are just CGI and they, in a different level, they are empty. Even famous directors and personalities said that so what would you like to tell them? What's the question? What am I, what, what, what? Superhero movies are empty and are just, mm, you know, like uh, thematic part and everything. Yeah, well, you, you know me well enough to know that I don't believe that. Um, I love these movies. I make these movies. That's my answer. I mean, that's perfect. I think that's the best answer possible. <laughs> Okay, so, well, um, I would like to know, because in this movie you have uh, a lot of things going on that you have to take your uh, previous character, you have to present new characters, you have uh, this new villain who is very complex with Khan, also this new world, which is the Quantum Realm. So how do you manage as a creator to fix everything and still have creative freedom in order to do whatever you want? Well, you know, this, this movie is really an ensemble movie because it is a story about, a generational story about a family of superheroes. But we also wanted to take them into the quantum realm and present all these new characters, some of whom are based in comic characters, you know, like Jentora, uh, who's, who's a Marvel character. But some are characters that we created out of whole cloth, uh, you know, down in the quantum realm. And, of course, to be able to introduce Kang the Conqueror, who was as a kid, one of my favorite villains uh, in the Avengers and in Fantastic Four. Um, that, was, that was great. And they're always a balancing act. You know, all the Ant-Man movies have had a lot of characters. And I've done a lot of movies, I think from my first movie, Bring It On, which is a very ensemble movie. Um, I like that balancing act. That's something that I really think is fun, is, is finding the balance of dealing with all those characters and, and their arcs, but also them all serving this sort of overriding story. So, um, it's really the same on every movie, no matter how big the, uh, you know, the canvas gets that we're painting on. Okay. Um, well, there are a lot of uh, expectations about this movie because of the, this is the start of page five, the can and conquer and everything. Do you think that people have higher expectations with Marvel than with any other movies? I don't think so. I think that uh, what's possibly different is that Marvel fans, there, there are two camps of Marvel fans. They're the ones who came from the comic book world, they have expectations about the characters because they have a relationship with the characters from reading those stories, and they have concerns about how that character is portrayed in, in the movies. 
<clears throat> then there are the other Marvel fans who really just have experienced the MCU and those characters. Um, and, you know, the MCU's been around since 2008, so they, uh, they're very, very passionate, the fans. As a kid, as a kid, I was a passionate fan. I was passionate about Planet of the Apes and Star Wars and all these things, you know, from, from my generation that I was a huge fan of. I understand that fan mentality. Um, on the other hand, as a director of the movies, um, I'm going to make what I want to make and what I enjoy and what I want to see on the screen. And if people love it and embrace it, that's awesome. If they don't love it and it's not what they were expecting, I don't care. 